Ratio and proportion. Ratio and proportion. This is going to be some review, but not all. I think this is stuff that even though you've maybe seen it before, this will be a little more challenging uh, take on it. So ratio and proportion. What are we talking about? We're talking about ratio and proportion. Ratios are nothing more than fractions. That's what they are. Ratio means fraction. If we talk about a rational number, rational number just means ratio number, right? How do you spell it? Ratio, N-A-L, spells rational, right? So it just means a number that can be written as a fraction. You don't have to write them as fractions. You can write them in this format also. Right? You can use a colon instead of a fraction bar. But really, the better of the two, if you had to choose, the better of the two is the fraction. Because we know how to do math so much better using fractions than we do without. A uh, couple things. You know that just like in a normal fraction, you can't divide by 0, right? You can't have the, the the bottom of a ratio be 0 either, right? So if our ratio is A to B, then B cannot be 0, right? Because, like I said, you can't divide by 0. Uh, we usually want to express ratios in simplified form, but all that means is in reduced fraction form, if you think of it as a fraction. So if we take the ratio, for example, 6 to 8, if the ratio is 6 to 8 written as a fraction, what would that look like? 6 over 8. And remember to write your fraction bars horizontally. Don't use slashes. 6 over 8 reduces to what? Garrison, put those away. 3 fourths. 3 fourths. Good. So the reduced form, the simplified form of that ratio is 3 to 4. Okay? Because that's what the fraction reduces to. Okay? Make sense? So that's ratio. Definition of a ratio. Now what do we do with these things? Okay? Well, a couple things. First of all, if we want to simplify ratios that involve quantities, so they actually involve units like centimeters or feet or inches, then that's okay to do. We're just comparing quantities. If I'm comparing 12 centimeters to 4 centimeters, what is the ratio of those two measurements? 12 over 4 reduces to 3. And that works because we're comparing the same kinds of units, right? If I'm comparing centimeters to centimeters, you can think of the units as literally canceling, just like variables would. If I divide, you know, x over x would cancel, right? And I get 12 over 4, which reduces to 3 over 1, which is just 3, right? So that's, that first ratio just simplifies to 3, or 3 to 1, either however you want to look at it. Okay, what about the second one? Yeah, that works, because I'm comparing feet and feet, right? And so the feet cancel. 6 over 18 <laughs> reduces to, what, how many times does 6 go into 18? Yeah, so I can change the, replace the 6 with the 1 and the 18 with a 3, and I get 1 third. And those two make sense, don't they? Because isn't 12 centimeters exactly 3 times as much as 4 centimeters, right? Isn't 6 feet exactly 1 third as much as 18 feet, right? Okay. And then this, of course, the inches cancel, and I get 9 over 18 equals 1 half, right? And that works also. But what happens if we're comparing numbers with different units? Then we got to be careful, because is 12 centimeters over 4 meters 3 to 1? No, because those are actually distances or lengths, right? 12 centimeters is, you know, like that long. Four meters, that's like from, you know, like from me to the door, right? Clearly, four meters is a lot bigger than 12 centimeters. And yet, if I just look at the numbers, I get the ratio of three over one. So what do I have to do? Good. I have to convert one of those two units into the other one, so I'm comparing the same kinds of units, right? Okay, now, which one is going to be easier to do? Centimeters. Meaning centimeters, two meters? Yeah. I'd say no. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'd say it's, well, it's but it's, it's not going to be 1.2. It's going to be something less than that. It's, it's generally easier. If, if you're going to convert one to the other, it's generally easier to take one of the big unit and convert that into a whole bunch of the small unit, right? Because isn't it easier to say, how many centimeters in a meter? 100, right? Isn't it easier to say one meter is the same as 100 centimeters than it is to say one centimeter is the same as one one hundredth or 0 .01 of a meter? 
I mean, it's harder to do that, isn't it? I'm dealing with decimals or fractions there, right? It's easier to always convert from a big unit into many small units, okay? Now, how do we go about that process? If I want to turn 12 centimeters, or excuse me, 4 meters into 12 centimeters, here's what we can do. There's a really easy way to go about this. Okay, I want to show this to you. And this is going to seem like overkill for now, but trust me, this is a great way to do it. Whenever I want to convert from one unit to another, I use what's called a conversion factor or a changer. And you've probably done this in your science classes, hopefully. Right, so if I want to convert from meters into centimeters, I'm just going to multiply by a fraction with what units? Well, I want the meters to be replaced with centimeters, right? So I want the meters to cancel, correct? So then I, I want to put the meter on top because looking ahead, exactly, I want the meters to end up canceling. Right? So I'm going to put the meters on top, and what's going to be on the bottom then? Centimeters. Centimeters. Good. Okay. So good. So you probably, yeah, this would be something you would have done in your science classes. Now, let's put the numbers in there. We always said it's easier to start with one of the big units, right, and find out how many of the small units go into that. So one meter, you told me, is 100 centimeters, right? And so if I just multiply straight across then, well, what do I get on the top? Now, Okay, good. I, I'm going to get, on the top, I'm going to get 12 for my number. On the bottom, I'm going to get 400, right? Agreed? What about the units? Well, the meters have already canceled. What did we end up with? Centimeters on the top and centimeters on the bottom, right? And now that I'm comparing centimeters to centimeters, I could cancel those too. But I wanted to be able to write it in terms of the same unit first. Make sense? So now I know I'm dealing with... Instead of, now, 12 and 400, those numbers make sense because 4 meters is actually a lot bigger than 12 centimeters. But now that we've written them both in centimeters, we can see that in the numbers themselves, right? And so we cancel the centimeters, and then all we have to do is reduce that fraction. Okay, but I'm going to show you a little trick. When you're multiplying across here, because what I'm really just doing is multiplying the two fractions, 12 over 4 times 1 over 100. to get that 12 over 400, right? Okay, We can cross-cancel as we go. It's a lot easier to do that. When I'm multiplying fractions, it's much easier to reduce before we multiply than to get these great big numbers that I end up having to reduce. So along the way, what could I do? Well, 12 over 4, we've already done that. That reduces to 3 over 1, right? So I could replace the 12 with a 3 and the 4 with a 1. And now when I multiply straight across, I just get 3 on the top and 100 on the bottom. Make sense? Okay. That's an easier way to go, isn't it? And then, of course, the unit's canceled, and so that's our answer. Right? Get the idea? Okay, let's try another one. Okay, what about uh, this guy? Six feet divided by 18 inches. Right now, so I want to, those aren't the same units. I'm comparing feet and inches, so I got to make them the same units. Which one am I going to convert? <laughs> feet to inches, good. So we'll multiply through by, oops, wrong color. Okay, so we'll multiply through, now do the units first. Always want to do the units first. What unit am I trying to cancel? Feet. feet. So where does feet go in this changer? Uh, On the bottom. Okay, good. And so those are going to cancel. Okay, now, so that means inches go on the top. And how much, what numbers am I going to use then? 12. Okay, 12 inches. One foot is 12 inches, right? Okay. Now I multiply straight across, and I got it. But I can, I can reduce as I go. 6 over 18, that does reduce to what? One third. One third. So I replace the 6 with a 1, the 18 with a 3. And I can even reduce again, right? Look, I can even reduce again because 12 over 3 reduces 2, doesn't it? Yeah, I can replace the 3 with a 1 and the 12 with a 4. And now if I multiply straight across, what's my number? Well, 1 times 4 is 4. 1 times 1 is 1. What are my units? Inches over inches. Like we wanted, right? Does that make sense? So the inches cancel, and my ratio is just 4 to 1. Okay. Yes, sir. So, 
Okay, so no big deal. Okay. Okay, now let's look at now. Here's where you got to really, really pay attention because this, this is this is a big concept, but it's extremely useful. We're gonna do we're gonna get a lot of mileage out of this, and it's something that that will apply. This is one of those things that you use in everyday life too a lot. Proportions and ratios are very, very helpful. So let's say we know here that the perimeter of this rectangle, A, B, C, D, is 60. Okay, now we know that the ratio of A, B to B, C is 3 to 2. So what's that mean? So if this is A, B, we might call that the, I guess we're calling that the width. We're calling this the length. So the ratio of width to length is 3 to 2. Does that mean that the sides themselves are 3 and 2? It's possible, but it doesn't work out in this case, does it? If I, if I do that, if I, if I plug in those numbers, if I say that that's 3 and that's 2, then what's the perimeter of this thing going to be? It's a rectangle. So these opposite sides are 10, right? How'd you get 10? Add them all up, but I, I have to. I have two threes and two twos, right? Because I got to go. If I'm an ant walking around this thing, I start there. I've walked three, right? I've walked two, so that's five total. I've walked three more, so that's eight. And I walked two more, so that's ten. Agreed? So when I want to add up the perimeter, it's just two times the width plus two times the length. So it didn't work, did it? It didn't work that. Oops, that the actual length and width were 3 and 2. But I know that they're in that ratio. I know that if, if for example, the width were 20, what would the, or the length were 20, what would the width have to be? It'd have to be 30, right? Because it has to be in that ratio, 2 to 3. Agreed? So then, if I want to... If I want to come up with what the actual lengths are, there's a bunch of ways I could do this, but this is a great trick. Why don't we call these instead of 2 and 3, let's call them 2 times x and 3 times x. Well, we don't know what x is yet, but I'm going to have to multiply both of these by some number to make them big enough so that their perimeter will equal 60. Agree? Yeah. Does that make sense? So then what we've said is the length of this thing is going to be 2 times some as yet unknown number, x. But we'll find out. The width is equal to three times that same number, because they have to get bigger by the, proportionally, we'd say, by the same factor, right? Now we can set this thing up where there's an equation so we can actually solve for x to find out what it is. If we find out that x is like 5, for example, then we'd know that the length is 2 times 5, which is 10, and the width is 3 times 5, which is 15. That's not going to be it in this case, but you get the idea. We just have to know what are we multiplying each of these by to get them to be the right numbers, but still be in that ratio. Okay, because isn't it true that 3 over 2 is the same as 3x over 2x? Aren't those, that's what we mean if we say that they're proportional, that the ratios are equal, are they? Aren't they? Don't the x's cancel? Right? Okay. So then now, what could we say the perimeter is? If we're, if we're actually saying that the length is 2 times x and the width is 3 times x, now I can come up with some equation that's going to be a little more helpful. What would the perimeter be? 2x plus 3x plus 2x plus 3x, right? How many x? No. 10, right? Okay, so I'm going to get... Here we go. So the perimeter would equal 2 times 2x, because I've got 2 of those, plus 2 times 3x, which is 10x, right? But we know that the perimeter is 60, right? So if the perimeter, if 10x equals 60, then what would x be? Okay, now I can just divide both sides by 10, right? And I get 6. Does everybody see that? Okay, so... So if I know x is 6, I can feed that right back into, oh, why does it keep doing that? I can feed that right back into my length and width 
and find out what they actually are. Because I just found out that I have to multiply that 2 and 3 each by 6 to make them big enough so that they all add up to 60. Right? Get the idea? So what would I get then? What's, what's the length going to be? If x is 6, what's the length? 12. Good. Okay, what's the width going to be? 18. Let's check it. Does that work? Well, 12 plus 12 is 24. 18 plus 18 is 36. 24 and 36 is 60, right? So it did work. Okay. Can you see why that would be pretty useful, though? I mean, if you knew, for example, let's say, I mean, uh, I can't think of a really great example off the top of my head, but let's say you knew, you looked online at the specs for the new truck you're going to buy, and the truck has a, has, let's say we know that, we know that the, uh, we know that the ratio of the length to, what do you do here? The ratio of the length to the height, you know what it is. Okay, you know what that ratio is. And let's say you even have like a scale model of this thing. You, you've got a scale model of this of this truck. And you want to know how big to make your garage. Well, you could, that would be useful then, right? You could set up a proportion and solve it if you want to make the garage big enough. So you know you get your truck in the garage. If you just knew what the ratio was and you knew what the length of this little scale model was, you could figure it all out. Does that make sense? So, I mean, that's not a great example, I guess, but there's a ton of applications where this kind of thing would be useful. Okay, so there's what we just did. Okay, it's on the PowerPoint. You can click through it later. Let's look at another one. What about this guy? So we got this triangle, triangle JKL. Now, we know that the measures of the angles are in the extended ratio. What in the world is that? An extended ratio, 1 to 2 to 3. What's that mean? If three things are in the ratio, 1 to 2 to 3. A ratio normally means two things, like the ratio of something to something else might be the ratio, like in the last example, was 3 to 2. What if I have an extended ratio? Yeah, OK, good. Now I'm comparing three things at once. I've got these three things that have this, this combined ratio of 1 to 2 to 3. So in this case, I've got the angles in a triangle. So the first angle is the smallest angle. The middle angle is how many times bigger than the small one? Twice. The big angle is how many times bigger than the small one? Three, right? So this tells me a bunch of stuff. It tells me that these two are in a ratio of one to two. That one and that one are, are in a ratio of one to three. And those two are in a ratio of two to three. Okay? But they all share a relationship there, extended ratio. Okay? Now, if I want to find the measures of the angles, well then, I know that these, and here's, here's our triangle, let's say, right? It may or may not be a right triangle, but, but if, if this, is, this is the ratio, there's the small angle, there's the medium angle, and there's the big angle. If I were just to plug in 1 and 2 and 3, that's not going to work. That's not 1 degree, and that's not 2 degrees, and that's not 3 degrees, because those don't add up to 180. And that's what they have to add up to, right? The sum of the interior angles, the measures of the interior angles of any triangle is always 180, which we know well. So 1 and 2 and 3 don't work. But whatever answers I get, they have to be in that ratio. So I'm going to have to multiply each of those by the same amount to grow them big enough so that they actually do add up to 180. So what do we say instead? Well, how about x, 1x, 2x, and 3x? Right? We could call those the actual angles, because those are in the ratio of 1 to 2 to 3. You see? And so now I've got an easy equation I can solve. If, if here these angles are in the correct ratio, 1 to 2 to 3, they all have to add up to 180, right? And so if I do the math on this one, 1x plus 2x plus 3x equals 180. Well, that's just 6x, right? If 6x equals 180, then x is 30. So it turns out that I had to multiply each of those by 30 to make them big enough so that they stay in that ratio but still <coughs> add up to 180, right? Okay, and so we end up with, you know, the, the angles would then be 30 degrees, and 2 times 30 would be 60, and 3 times 30 is 90. And if we check it, that works. 30 plus 60 plus 90 is 180, right? Uh, okay, what about this one? 
the ratios of the side lengths of the big triangle, the EF, to the corresponding side lengths of the small triangle, ABC, are two to one. So what's that tell us right there? That's kind of useful information. Okay, good. So this, this one is twice as big as this one, right? So this, we can say there is a two to one ratio. So now if I want to know, what are they asking here? Find the unknown lengths. Okay, we can do that, right? So if this is, this one corresponds to this one, right? Okay, and this one must correspond to that one. So, right, if this is going to be twice as big as this guy is, if I call this, let's call this x. I can set up a little ratio equation then. I know that 2 over 1, because that's the scale between these two things, has to equal 8 divided by x, because that's the corresponding side. Everybody see that? Yeah. Right? And that's easy to solve. How would I solve an equation like that? Now, you, this goes back to algebra 1. How do you do this in algebra 1? How did you solve a ratio equation? Cross multiply. So if I cross multiply, I'm going to get 2x equals 8, or so x equals 4, right? And I could do the same thing, obviously, for this, couldn't I? But the ratio would be backwards. Now. I've got 2 over 1 equals, call that maybe y, y over 3. And I could also cross multiply and solve that and just get 6, right? Does it make sense? Yep. Uh, don't we also do, do we have to get that kind of problem? Or, uh, it didn't ask for it. Um, didn't ask for it. Uh, we could have, right? We have a coda, sure. We could have. Okay, and then there's there's what we just did. Yeah. <coughs> all right, we got all that. So so what do we do here? I mean that that's essentially those are the kinds of problems you're gonna do. We've got a couple properties of proportions. We have the cross product property. That tells us that we can always, which you already know, that's just cross multiplying. I know that if A over B equals C over D, then I can cross multiply and get A times D, right? That cross product equals this cross product, C, B times C, right? You know that. You just told me that one. The reciprocal property, here's, here's kind of a tricky one, a good one. I know that if A over B equals C over D, then wouldn't that also work if I just flipped both sides, right? So I'd also know that the reciprocals are equal. So B over A would equal D over C, okay? So, you know, like for example, with this guy right here, uh, see, I think they do this in kind of a goofy way. How would you solve for X here? To me, to me this, is, this is kind of a crazy way to go about it. You don't need to do all this stuff. What would you just do instead? Cross multiply and solve for X, right? That's fine. I'm fine with that. That's probably the easiest, most consistent way of doing it. Just cross, multiply, and solve. Okay, now what about this one, though? What about this? This is just a little bit tougher, right? Not much, but a little bit. I'm going to do the same thing, though, right? And, and here's why. Because we know that if I've got a fraction equation, that's ugly. We don't want a fraction equation. We want to have an equation that doesn't use fractions. And the way that you eliminate the fractions is by cross multiplying, right? So what happens if I cross multiply? Okay, so I'm going to get that cross product, 3 times y is 3y. What about this cross product? Now look at this one. You got to be careful with this one. I'm multiplying the quantity y plus 2 times 2. So the 2 has to get multiplied by that whole thing. Well, what's our way of doing that? Distribute. Distribute. Yeah, we got to write it as 2 times in parentheses y plus 2. When I multiply that out, I have to distribute that 2 to both parts, don't I? So 2y plus 4, and now that's a really easy equation to solve, right? I would just get the y's on one side. I want to collect the y's on the side where I'll get a positive number, so where I have the most, over here. So subtract 2y, and I just get y equals 4, okay? Questions? There's a lot to this one, but we're about there. Okay, in fact, we're there. Now, okay, here, here's what I'm doing on this assignment. Let me show you, being as we're, there's really no sense going to the lab, is there? I think we've got 10 minutes. Let, let me just show you something on Moodle here that's kind of slick. Slick is your word today. What's that? Slick is your word today. Slick? Have I? It's just, I don't know. It seems like a, just a good word for today, I guess. I don't know. Okay, take a look at this. If you go to a couple things. 
I'll be a student. How about? Okay, if you go to the geometry side, a couple things I wanted to show you. First of all, under course resources, if you go down to lecture videos, if you go down, to, for example, to like uh, chapter five, six instructional videos, I want to show you what this does. Because this, I, I, you guys need to be using this. If you click on that, it just goes to my playlist for chapters five and six. And look at that, it's all in order. These are all the in-class stuff that we, things that we did. You know, to talk about chapter six stuff. And it goes in order from the first to the last. Now, I tried to name these so they mean something to you when you look at them. I put the topic, the section in the book, what the title is, and then what the date is when we talk about it. Okay? Does that make sense? Yep. Now, if you go to those, I think I kind of showed this to you before. If you go to those, it'll just pop into, into a full YouTube console and, and you have all that stuff available. All right? So, what else? on this new problem set. I'm going to do two parts of these. I, I, I honestly thought that the chapters, the last two chapters, I never was really very happy with, with the Moodle set stuff that I had put together for you for chapters five and six and chapter seven. I, I just I always thought that they were kind of hokey. I mean, they, were, they weren't very, they, yeah, they weren't very hard. I mean, and there, were, there weren't very many different questions, and I just was not very proud of those. I mean, it was all I had time to do, but I didn't think they were very good. Well, chapter eight is a much more important chapter, and so I really have taken. I mean, this I spent, you know, probably eight hours on this yesterday alone trying to get this thing going. But but I got it. I got it going where I'm putting these new kinds of, of problems in that are much much better than any of the normal Moodle problems. And so when you click on this thing, no no no, it doesn't. What it means is what I really want to now that I've got a good database of problems in here started at least, and I'll try to keep up with it. Uh, I would much rather have you doing working on this stuff in the lab because I feel like once there's a good database of problems, it's going to really challenge you where there's no patterns. You know, you just you have to just learn to conquer these problems. Practice is what I really want you to do. And so these are kind of the old ones, but if you keep going down this thing, when you get to the problems that have these little yellow square roots next to them, these are the new ones. And I have to I have to go in and and work with people at the ESD and kind of tune the server and do some upgrades for these things to work 100%. But they work fine now. You can start on them. You're gonna. The nice thing about these is I'll put these on the next test instead of the old style ones, and I can go back to the old format because that glitch in Moodle does not apply to these problems. So I can go back to the old kind where you can. Yeah, it's it's and there's complicated reasons for that, but but. Uh, you can you can answer something and if it's multiple choice you'll be able to just mouse over it and see where you got parts wrong and you know where they were right and all that stuff will return all that functionality returns but there's just no glitch to exploit so a yes how come it says like amazing on yours but well cuz these are the these are the ones that i i'm kind of just borrowing i'm just modifying some problems that i'm making for a textbook and so these are these are ones that are I've, you know I've spent a lot of time on because they're going to get sold, and so does that make sense? So they're going to be, so they're going to be better quality problems. They they take a long time to build, uh, but but I can with with not a whole lot of extra effort, I can get them. I can bring them in and use them in some of my classes here at school. So, so like if if you click on these eventually, what's going to happen? I don't know why it's not doing it right now, but it will. This is where you'll get that little pop up thing that'll show you like fraction templates and square roots and all that fancy stuff. Okay, and that's. I'm just, you know, like I say, I got to go in and tweak the server just a little bit, but those will be available also. Yes, sir. So are we not going to use books? Well, you, I mean, you'll still probably need to use your books a little bit. Uh, once this thing is fully in place, you honestly won't need to use them at all because all the stuff will be. Anytime you mouse, the, every word that would show up in the book will will have a. It'll be hyperlinked on Moodle, and when you when you click on it. A pop-up will will overlay the screen. It'll have all the information and more that would be in your book. So eventually, you won't even need the books. But for now, you probably do until that's all gone. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'm I'm gonna do this one in two parts. Here's the first part. You can get going on this tonight. I'll I'll give you lab time tomorrow. Nothing but lab time to kind of work on this stuff too. Okay. Deal. All right. Take a couple minutes and just relax. How's that sound?